Larry Abraham. Set off. Mr. Cohn, I'd rather suck the pus out of an abscess. I'd rather drink a subway toilet. I'd rather chew off my tongue and spit it in your leathery face. So thanks for the offer of conversation, but I'd rather not. Christ's sake, what I gotta do? Beg? Waste of time, wasting and weakness. I want to kill them. Of course, they can't kill this, can they? No. It's too simple. It knows itself. It's harder to kill something if it knows what it is. Murray, it's been said about life that what we do for ourselves, we take with us. But what we do for others, we leave behind. Does Roy have any legacy that is in any way perceivable? Well, he's an icon, for one thing. And uh, I think that it's important to hold these negative icons up to light as much as the positive ones. The fact that he became so prominent and powerful is, I think, an example of our society. In those terms, he left behind an important legacy. The amazing thing about Roy is that the way he's portrayed now, through the, the words of Tony Kushner, is that the more despicable I make him, the more the people respond to him. This was a big surprise to me. I've played some heavyweights, Mephistopheles and Iago, but it's different when you play these fictitious characters. It was very hard to play Cohn because I hated him so much. I was raised to hate him. And uh, playing someone you hate is not that easy. But uh, what happens is the more I relish the horrible things he did, I mean really enjoy them, the more the people respond, they really are titillated and excited by it. I've never experienced that before. They actually hiss the villain. They hiss him. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a great achievement. I've always wanted to do melodrama. I like that kind of size. And it's, it's achieved on this stage. It's, it's very rewarding. It's almost as rewarding as the laughs he gets. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. He is deprived of the one thing that he is most proud of, that being power both internally through his disease and externally through the Bar Association or this uh, legal committee, which strips him of his power, mm -hmm. his honor, anything that he had left. So in a way, it's fine to rail at death, mm -hmm. but he had nothing left. Uh, he died a very lonely man. Yeah. Say what you will about him, and I'm not defending him, but it seems to me that the men and women who attacked him finally when he was weak were really cowardly. They didn't have the courage to do it when he was strong and well. They waited till he was down and out. And uh, I think that is also a, an indictment of the society generally, because mm -hmm. they're a part of the system as much as he was. Uh, the character of Roy does show us that there is some hope beyond the grave, and the peace of mind that he might have sought on Earth that he was not granted, he receives in the afterlife. I'm glad that Tony enables us to see you in peace. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you really think he's at peace? His edges are softer. Softer? Yes, yes. But peace, I don't think the man will ever know peace. I don't think we'd like him if he had any peace. I think we'd like him as being, making, that's raising true. hell in hell. I think that's, that's true. true. <laughs> that's true. He does attempt to, uh, to get the old um, feistiness back, but it somehow doesn't work. Well, I'll tell you something interesting. There's a piece of the play that's been cut out that Tony wrote where God is brought to trial. And God hires, as his lawyer, Roy Cohn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> stripped of all his, uh, his, stripped by the bar, he still can, can call a good argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're at home in the classics. Yes. Is Tony Kushner the 21st century Shakespeare? I don't know about Shakespeare, but he's, he's absolutely one of the very best in this century. His no poetry, question at all. His po poetry is so colloquial, and yet so beyond earth in a way. I mean, it's just it's in another realm. She's the best writer since Williams. Mm -hmm. and, and a hopeful writer. Let's not forget that. In this, this era, this period of dark, dark writers since Beckett, Pinter, and Mammoth, they're very brilliant writers, but they're so bleak. And this is such a pleasure because it does imply a future, which is a rare thing these days. And this is one of the reasons I'm doing it. You do those dark plays long enough and you get, get a little bit uh, down yourself. I like comedy. And uh, this, I get a chance to be really funny in this. Yeah. 
You don't talk to me like that when I'm holding something this sharp, or I might slip and stick it in your heart if you have a heart. Oh, I do. Tough little muscle. Never bleeds. I'll bet. Now, I've been doing drips a long time. I can slip this in so easy you think you were born with it. Or I can make it feel like I just hooked you up to a bag of liquid Trano. <laughs> so you be nice to me, or you'll be one sorry asshole come morning. Nice. Nice. And quiet.